pull out the tissue now and now try and get the drive shafts in. Again, it's going to be a bit of a struggle because it has to go through there's like a, an outer roller bearing, there's an inner bearing and then there's the actual teeth where it goes into the um, half moons and everything has to line up all the um, planet gears, there's loads of different names for that, I'll go through that on the other video. So it's just a case of making sure it's definitely in, it's going to take a lot of wiggling but we will get there. Just very awkward, a lot of wiggling. Right, what I do as soon as I get this one in, I'm just going to have to wiggle it. Um, I don't know if the camera's on, you can't really see everything's in the way. But I'm about two, two, yeah, about two inches away from being in, so I'm just going to have to twist the diff where it actually bolts into the drive shaft or the, the prop shaft, sorry, just to line these teeth up. But what I'm actually getting caught on now is this ring, so I need to get that ring, this locking ring, past everything so it actually locks in. So it's just going to take a lot of wiggling, a lot of swearing, turn the camera back on once I get it done. Right, I'm going to try this as best I can. I managed to get the other side in, so I'm going to try and film this, but I just don't know how it's going to go because everything's going to be in the way. But we're going to move the wheel, which you can't see, it's just off camera. We're going to push the wheel. To out so we can get this drive shaft in and hopefully I can just film the drive shaft going in that's the plan so give it a good clean I'm gonna pull out the bits of tissue and crap so nothing could have got in as I was pulling it in now if just get to pull out the wheel and hopefully we're pulling out the wheel Now, I've managed to pull out the wheel and I don't know if I actually catching my hands getting in the way. I am trying. Now, the problem is we're at that ring again, but we are kind of in. So what I'm going to do now to make my life easier is I'm going to put these two bolts back in just to stop everything kind of coming off. But because we've taken these bolts off, what you will have to do is get this trapped definitely get it tracked if you have to take anything like that off now if you haven't got ones that are trackable don't worry about it but as you can see you can track these so we need to track this afterwards but we won't worry about that yet I'm going to get it back in place just so that can't actually pop itself back out and hopefully it should be simple enough to get this put back Hard on your own. I just can't see what I'm doing on both sides. This is the problem, it's always harder to get things in than it is to take them out most of the times anyway. And this is just twisted on me. So, a lot more swearing before it goes in, I think. Now, another thing I can try and do is to pull that bolt out a bit, put a big screwdriver in the hole, try and line up the hole with the screwdriver, and then, so once you've got that lined in, I don't know if my hand's in the way and try and hit the bolt through fast and that time it didn't work a small screwdriver so let's try that again a small screwdriver in wedge that's up which to be honest isn't even working now there we go <laughs> got it 
I'm not worried about tightening these yet, I'm just kind of putting them in place. It's just going to stop that drive shaft completely falling out, which is here as you can see. Move the camera a bit now. So it's going to stop that drive shaft completely falling out, so it's just going to give me a lot easier chance to get it in. But again, it's just going to be awkward, so I'm going to have to line everything up and I'm going to have to get that little clip which I showed you, it's that clip that stopped me now um, and then clips are obviously important so the drive shaft doesn't fall out and if you look back on a video I did recently that little clip broke on a drive shaft on my car and the, it popped out and there was no drive so then clips are very very important so don't take them off thinking oh I'll get it in easier, yeah you will get the drive shaft in easier but it won't last that make some really bad noises and believe me you don't want to do it. Now what I had to do is I had to put my transmission jack under the diff just to basically stabilize it because I was really struggling to get this shaft in. So what I ended up doing, you have to be careful you don't hit it hard, I put a vice grips on the actual shaft as you can see it locked it and I just got a hammer and very gently because it doesn't take a lot of pressure you just hit, hit it until it just goes in, you might have to twist the diff, it's now going in, and then there we go, she popped in. So very, very gently, you hit it with a hammer, once I take it off, as you can see, I've done no damage to anything, and we are now in. As you can see, it's now in fully. Both are now in fully. If I turn the wheels, it's turning, I turn the other wheel, yeah. Both are turning the diff, and if I turn the centre diff, the actual centre part where the shaft goes into, as you can see, the drive shafts are actually turning. So, that's a bit of fantastic news. Let's see if I can just get that a bit better. Now, there we go. As I turn this with my hand where the actual prop shaft goes, you can see the two drive shafts either end are turning. And if I turn one wheel at a time, the centre bit is turning as well where my hand is, turn the other wheel and it's doing the same thing. So we know we're in properly. Um, if you have to force these drive shafts in, well you, for a start you don't do, you don't force drive shafts in. But if you are then you, something's happening, something's wrong. Don't force these in. I hit that very gently with the hammer. It just needs that little bit of pressure to go over that clip. But if you have to really force these in, that little clip is maybe broke or damaged or something. So these should just kind of slot in relatively easy. The other one slotted in by hand. It took a bit of wiggling, but I got it by hand. This one I couldn't. So bear that in mind. Now we're basically, what we're gonna do next is, I think I'm gonna put all the diff mounts on now before I shove it up. So I've just got a lot more room to put the diff mounts on. I think it's just gonna be a little bit easier to put the diff mounts in, then shove up the whole thing then lock everything together, blah, 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 blah. So it really is coming along very well. I will say to you though, obviously, you wanna, if you are gonna be tackling this job, make sure you uh, put a lot of time aside because it's taking, I don't know how many hours, but it's taking, well, it's just a lot longer than I was hoping it would take. But anyway, this is just the things you have to do. I was just taking my time with the bolts and none of the bolts have snapped on me which is a good thing if I was just ripping the bolt off and didn't care I'd have it hard in half the time but because I obviously wanted to make sure I wasn't snapping any bolts you just have to take your time so what we're going to need to do now is uh, put the diff mounts on now unfortunately I'm just just noticed that this diff mount here has gone if I put it close you can see the top all there is completely just gone you can see that middle's moving so it's absolutely pointless me putting that back uh, I did notice that the front one is okay we only changed that recently and the other side you can't really maybe see it on camera but it's just beginning to actually crack so it isn't good unfortunately so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to get two more of these there is no point putting these in so I'm not even going to attempt to try and damage this diff. I want this to be in and sorted because the money 
on the diff and stuff I don't need any other problems along with it so yeah this is now going to be delayed for a couple of days oh the joys now, what I'm going to have to do is because I can't I can't wait to get these parts so I'm going to put everything back together once I get the parts put them parts in last I can do that I can put everything up and do them last lucky enough it is a bit more awkward doing that way but I can get away with doing it that way but what I am going to do is I'm going to put the front diff mount in first as we can see um, which is this here then I'm going to put the subframe up and I'm going to tighten everything just waiting on the back mounts then so hopefully you can see this um, I'm just going to rest this in place we'll kind of hold the diff in as such This is the more awkward one to get in out of the three anyway, so at least I can kind of do this one. The back two are not too bad to put in at all. It was just a nightmare to take off the bolt, but anyway, hopefully they go in a lot easier than coming off. Now I do it from this side, it might be a bit easier. This is the front diff bolts. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to tighten it because I want to get all the diff mounts in place first before I tighten it properly. But what I will do is I just screw them in most of the way. Once we get the diff in properly, that's when you tighten because there is a bit of movement in the diff, so you don't want to tighten one diff mount first. Get them all in, tighten it all together once this is in and absolutely everything like that. So as you can see that's the front diff mounted. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the rear one in just to hold it. Kind of hold it in place just for the time being until I get the other one. Just so it doesn't strain the front diff mount. But again it's only going in hand tight. But that just kind of, it just stops a lot of pressure on the one mounting. What I'm going to do next is tighten these two bolts, I'm going to tighten them down here because this is where I left them so the rubber is going to be set in the same position. Now what we're going to do is we're going to lift the whole thing back up but we can still have problems doing this. But what is an important thing, on the actual diff you have a breather pipe here. Now I don't know if it's, you might just be able to see it just here where my finger is. Um, it clips on just, on just on top of the exhaust and it's important to get that clip on because if this falls below the actual diff, oil will start coming out and your diff will seize. So it's important you get that clipped on. So what I'm going to do now is we are going to lift the whole thing up. I've just realised that I didn't film, well I did film but it wasn't recorded. I tightened the two bolts here on the suspension, on the tracking arm. Uh, it was a 17mm spanner and a 15mm socket I just did them by hand so they're tight I tightened them before I lifted up because I loosened them as I lifted as I put them down so kind of tying everything in the same order so them two are tight they're just two bolts simple enough I am going to put the new diff mounts on when I get them but at least now I can kind of put all this back together and then do the diff mounts so when I actually get them I don't have to do as much work and I'm not far behind so I'm going to still now try and jack the holes back up. This can be fun to get this lined up and you have to be careful. Now as you can see it is going up. You have to be careful. You can do this with a jack or anything. You just have to be careful if you are doing it with a jack or under lift, you're not lifting the whole thing up. This is going up. It's going up in line. Nothing's getting trapped. So you want to double check all your handbrake cables, all your brake lines, everything you can just to make sure that this is going up where it's supposed to go and it's nice and straight. Now about half an inch away this needs to come to the back. Same with this, so the whole thing needs to go towards the back and then uh, I can put the bolts in. So it's a good thing to get all the bolts ready. I'm just going to spray them all with WD. Spray inside the holes. 
this is where it can be quite tricky. So I'm going to have to get lever bars and wedge them in and try the best place to wedge them in so I can actually force the whole thing forward. There's no decent place. Oh, there's one here. Right. So I've wedged it between the actual uh, the, the rail of the car against the actual um, subframe and that should give me enough yeah, just to push that in you do one bolt at a time again, you want, these should go in nice and easy you don't want to force these in you don't want to use air guns screw in by hand as far as you can that's going in nice and easy that one in. Put all four in before you even attempt to tighten anything. So the last one, the last one feels good as well. Now that's good, they've all gone in. This is another reason why you have to track it. Just to make sure, because we've obviously moved everything, we need to make sure the wheels are dead straight. I don't show tracking because people are not going to have tracking gauges at their house. I only kind of show things that people can do in the driveway or wherever. So there's no point in really showing you tracking. But I would suggest if you're doing this, to go down to your local tracking station and get it tracked. Because believe me, it will be off. Right, so I'm just going to... Now pump it so it's completely up, it's hitting where it should do because you don't want to be letting the bolt pull it together. That's going in, that's going in, it's all going in which is brilliant. I'm going to use an air gun again, I'm not going to tighten it fully. I'm going to do opposite corners just to make sure it's going in correct. Now, they're not tight, but they're nice and snug. So now I've got to do is I'm going to go around, hand tight all them in the big bar. And yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. Right, so now I'm going to tighten these by hand. straight because I haven't put all the mountains on it. What I am going to do now is put the diff pipe, clip that in. There we go. That's clipped in. Now all I can really do now unfortunately is put the prop shaft on. Um, can't really drive it or do anything with it because I could damage the diff because they're just as you can see the diff can still move too much so I can only really put it back together um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave I'm going to leave that prop shaft off it just gives me a little bit more room for this front mount here so that's all I can really do until I get the other back diff bushings which is going to be a couple of days for me just a few seconds for you right i am back now only a few seconds for you but a couple of days for me right we finally got the new diff mounts as you can see brand new but not only that you can also see one end sticks out further than the other because there is a left and a right to these now um, I don't know how anybody would actually get these muddled up. <clears throat> There's not a video out there of me doing these a few months ago where I did get them muddled up, so don't bother looking because it's just not out there. So, what I've done is I've put, already put one on, 
Now nothing's tight, everything's loose as you can see, the bolt's loose, the front mount's loose, the diff is still obviously moving around a hell of a lot. This is the really bad mount, I don't know, again, the camera's going to show that, but it's all cracked there, no point in putting it back on. So I'm going to put this mount on, put the prop shaft on, before I tighten anything up, just because to get this diff definitely in the right place, before I tighten anything, because there's, you know, th there is a slight bit of movement, and if this diff isn't completely level, we're just going to rip itself apart, so it's best to put everything in before, or to put everything in before I tighten anything. Now hopefully this is coming through, it is going to be quite tight, but I'm just going to feed it down the hole, just to line up the three bolts, simple enough. Again, hopefully you can see that. You might not be able to see the bolt, but if you're doing it yourself, it would kind of make a lot more sense. So I put the big bolt through first, just because it's easier for me. And then I can put the two smaller bolts to actually hold up the diff. Just get the diff in line. Now, move that up. So, as you can see, I have to lift up the diff a little bit, just to get that bolt in. I'm going to try see if we can get this a little bit better so you can see what is going on but I can't promise anything. So you can just see the top of the two mounts there, the front diff mount here, this is the prop shaft then which I need to put on and just under here you can see where the actual diff mounts go and it really is as simple as that. And again, the disc can still move as we can see because I haven't got absolutely everything tight. I'm going to put on the prop shaft now. Again, just loosely put on the prop shaft with the bolts here that we took off obviously at the beginning of the video. Once I get these four bolts lined up, then I'm going to tighten everything. So I'll turn the camera back on before I do any of that and uh, just put oil in. Good to go. Now, hopefully this is the best angle I can get so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just tightening the, the main bolts now. I'm not fully tightening them, so that's the three 15mm bolts that go through the actual mountains. I'm just nipping them up. Now, they're just nipped up. Now, so we've tightened them three bolts. They're not fully tight, but they are kind of a, you know, they, they've got a bit of a nip on them. You can do it with all three of them. The air tool I was using isn't very powerful, so it just kind of nips it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same with the 13mm bolts. So we've got two here, two on each mount, so the six bolt. And again, the air tool I'm using is not very powerful, so it's not going to do anything really to them. I would never be using an air gun to go into a cast um, housing or anything like that. But this isn't very powerful at all. So this is just going to kind of put them in for me. to tighten them properly afterwards. Now that should be looking and feeling a lot tighter, which it is. Now obviously as you can see it moves, which it has to because at the end of the day it is mounted on three rubber mounts. So there has to be a certain bit of movement there. But obviously it's not banging, it's not doing anything like that. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to tighten these, be uh, squeeze these in before I go any further. Um, and then we can basically tie in everything. So we have a 17 mil spanner and an E12 torque. And again, this is not tight. It's not a powerful air gun. Another good thing to actually remember is, I don't know if it's going to show up on this, it should do as I turn it around. So I'm turning the prop shaft around. Now I'll just move the camera back slightly. Now it might not be coming through very clearly but on this we have a what looks like um, a square metal plate and it's been welded to the actual prop shaft. Now there's a few of them on. They're balancing weights. They're very very important. If you see any shiny bits of uh, metal on your prop shaft it's possibly uh, one of your balance weights has fallen off. If your balance weights falls off then you can literally destroy everything. You can destroy your front diff, you can destroy your, 
your uh, back diff, your engine, your viscous um, shaft, you can absolutely destroy everything because this will be vibrating rather than spinning around properly. So it's always a good thing just to check your shaft and if you are driving you do feel any unusual vibrations, let's say you've just gone off road and you've maybe hit a few stones but then all of a sudden you feel a vibration it's no harm just to check these things because if they do come off you're in serious trouble if you leave it you can cause yourself a hell of a lot of money in rebuild now that's everything just nipped up nothing is tight but it's nipped up and as you can see there is movement but that's just moving on the rubber mount so there's nothing wrong with that there's no big movements there's no banging there's no absolutely anything like that so now we can actually tighten everything properly right so i'm going to now tighten the prop shaft first now they're loctite bolts that are used on this so we don't need to use anything else they're obviously they need to be tight now with most prop shafts they can only fit one way and what I mean by that is the actual plate on the diff the holes will only line up in one direction so if you put it on you think oh this is not right it just turn it around 180 degrees and it should fit then for the holes to line up properly That's that done. We've just got uh, 11, 12, 12 bolts to do. And then we are done. Fill it with oil and sort it. So all I'm gonna do now is there's no point in filming it. As you can see, I'm just gonna tighten all the bolts up on the diff mountings. No point in filming it because it'd just be boring. I'm only tightening the bolts. You can see what I've done and where they are. I'll turn the camera back on when we're actually ready to fill the diff. Now, the last part. Right, so as you can see, I have a battery, 12 volt car battery. And I have this pump, this pump that I got from Lidl's or Aldi's. I can't remember exactly which one it was, but it is absolutely brilliant. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fill the diff. And down here, what we've got, so I'll just put the camera down, as you can see, I've got some EP90 gear oil, that's what this back diff takes. The front diff takes different, but the back diff takes EP90. Um, so I'm just gonna press the button, let it pump until it comes out. I think it takes just under a litre, I can't remember exactly, but we'll know from So also make sure it's nice and level as you're doing this. You don't want this tipped up to one side or tipped up to uh, front or back or side to side because you'll put too much oil in or not enough. So you need it nice and level. Just going to check it to make sure. No, we still need to go more. You don't really need to know exactly how much it takes because all you do is you just pull the pipe out. Once you pull the pipe out, if, it, if there's oil coming out of the hole, you know you've got enough in it. Because I've got hardly any in the little barrel, the little drum. I just need to get it to the right angle. Just double check and have to wipe that because I spilt it everywhere. Nope. 
little bit more. Now that is it. Yep. As you can see, it is now coming out of the same hole. If you can see that, if the camera's picking that up, but the oil is now coming out. So that's a good sign. So I'm just going to let that kind of, I've overfilled it a little bit, so I don't want all that to go in it. Now, i just got to put the sump nut back on, or the diff nut back on, shall I say. Um, it's a 3.8 square drive. That's what it is. Fits into there. Simple as that. Yeah. Um, it is awkward, but you can kind of get into it. That's going to tighten it up. That really is as simple as that. Now what I've got to do is take it for a drive. Make sure it goes through all the gears. Make sure it isn't banging. Get it up to speed. Sounds good, doesn't it's not banging or anything. So really the proof is in the test drive. Now, as you can see, no Jeep behind me. Sorted. So it's done. I've taken it for a drive. I've locked the steering fully because when you lock the steering fully on then the diff lock and everything. So it wasn't clicking, it wasn't banging. Got up to speed, no vibrations, no noise. If you are driving it, once you get up to speed, if, you, if you're feeling a vibration or a noise, double check the drive shafts, make sure they're in line, make sure there's no weights falling off. Any problems you have, because if you don't sort them problems out, you will damage your diff again. Because what, it, the diffs don't normally really give much problems with them, to be fair. So if it's damaged, there's something that's caused it to be damaged. So if you are, once you put a new diff in, you drive it down the road and you do have problems, find them problems and sort them out straight away because you'll be, you'll be replacing the diff in a few months again. But lucky enough, we had no problems. There's no noise, there's oil, absolutely everything. So I'm delighted. It's off my lift. I can now start doing other things. So look, hope it helps. Thumbs up and subscribe. And don't forget to get your hands dirty. See you for the next one.